Surprise, 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 surprise. Hey, everybody, what's up? Andrew Hawkrattle here taking over. Um, let's go ahead and do some partying. We are going to be talking about generative fill here in the one and only Photoshop. Um, this is a little bit of a last minute uh, addition. So we're here together and chat. We're going to build something together. I want you to give me some suggestions. We're talking about generative fill in Photoshop. And I do want to show you something uh, that I learned from our friend Jesus Ramirez. It's going to be uh, really, really cool. It's a different way of doing uh, generative fill. So let's go ahead and just hop in real quick. We don't have much time here. I'm going to Adobe Stock. And what I'm going to be doing is I am going to just do um, maybe water. I, I want like a underwater kind of look. So we're just going to do water and we're going to kind of put something in. We're going to try a fish here that uses different opacities. So what I can do is I'm going to find something that looks like maybe this perfect right here. And if you've used generative fill before, um, we'll show you kind of the difference between the two. So when you use generative fill, it is going to fill in every single pixel that you select, but we can change that and play around with something new. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that water that I just got right here. And let's, let's use generative fill. Uh, let's just extend this canvas just a little bit. So we have some room here. Um, I don't want it to be black and it is going to use generative expand. So let's see what happens here. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens on this water. So I'm going to generative expand up to the top. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, um, and yes, note generative credits in stock are stock credits, not generative credits. Yes. Uh, good call. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a fish in here. And what I want to do is I am going to, uh, I want the fish kind of coming out of the water. So I'm going to use the lasso tool here and we're going to turn off the feather and then I'm going to grab and drag to kind of have a fish shape. Look at that. That is not a good fish, but we're going to use generative fill here and that is going to allow us to just type in fish. And this is way too big of a selection, but I want to show you the wrong way before we do the right way. Um, and if you want a super in-depth specific look at this, Jesus Ramirez has some really, really great tutorials um, on the Photoshop training channel, as well as here on Adobe Live. So fish, what do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. All right, so we've got a fish. It doesn't look great, um, right? Honestly, it doesn't look great. It looks like it's just sitting on top of the water. Um, but what we can do is we're gonna delete that is we are going to make a little bit of a different selection, right? And so what we can do is we are going to go into um, a new layer. Oh, chat, I'm gonna have to remember how to do this off, off the dome here. Uh, I'm gonna create a new layer here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to make a selection, but then we are going to do quick mask. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop in here and I'm going to do a fish here. It's kind of a fish shape question mark. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to go to edit and we are going to go to, sorry, we are going to go to, oh, chat, we're going to find it. Uh, I'm looking for fill edit fill i know it's here there we go fill oh i need to be in quick mask mode that's what it is so if you hit q for quick mask mode what that's going to do is it's going to show you what you have masked which is what i want right here so from here in quick mask mode i actually can use a very soft brush and what i can do is start painting in some of the water right so you can see here that the quick mask um all right, let's make, hold, hold chat. We have our selection. We're making a mask, great. Now, when we go into quick mask mode, it should show, oh, chat, I'm hurting so much. Um, here, make our selection, yes. Quick mask mode, there we go. So we had our selection and now we are in quick mask mode and I can just kind of paint out some of these portions. Um, and let's see if I can get here. You can see that it's starting to fill in red. And what I'm doing is kind of just making sure that the part that's of the fish that's under the water is a very soft brush. And I'm just brushing this out with black, very soft. And now with that selection, 
I can make the selection by right clicking right there. And now we can use generative fill. And what's gonna happen is we're just gonna type in fish. And what should happen is it is going to fade the fish into the water. And the reason is because my selection is not 100%, right? I used that quick selection and I kind of brushed out my, uh, my mask just a little bit. So let's see what happens here. All right, so let's turn off the quick mask mode right here. And let's look at our fish. It's not quite filling as much as I want, uh, but that is all right. What I can do here is with this, uh, with our generative fill layer, I believe that I can come in here. There we go. And just start brushing out part of that generative fill. And you can see that it's starting to make it look like it's a little bit underwater. And I'm doing that on the mask of the generative fill layer. And so that way, as it comes in, it is generating a little bit less into the background, right? Uh, so it meshes with the water a little bit better. This is really good if you're trying to blend some pieces together or trying to create an effect that is underwater, is a reflection um, or something of that style. Something else that we could do here is we could put something fully in the background, right? So let's do this. Let's make a selection here. So it looks pretty good to me. Uh, we're gonna go into the quick mask here. All right, looks okay. We're gonna make a new layer here. And then I'm going to just brush in and with this selection, right, right here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a brush and take the opacity down to 50. So set it at 50 and then we can hit Q to go into that quick mask mode. And you'll see as I start to brush this in, it's going to get a little bit more red, right? And I'm thinking of how the water depth would change, right? So maybe this is a little bit less and then this, right, starts to fade into the background. You can see that we're fading and getting it very, um, just a different look. So from here, we can uh, hold control and then click right here on our box. And then we are going to try generative fill and we are going to try uh, to generate a shark and see how that works. So in theory, the selection that we made is not at 100% uh, because we brushed it out a little bit. It should be a little bit less. We may have to do cleanup at the end using the brush tool and just masking that into the background. So let's see what happens. All right, so we've got a shark. That doesn't look too bad, uh, but we can come, right? So generative fill, let me turn these off is creating this whole box of the shark, right? And it is made through this layer mask. Now with this layer mask, we can change the density of that layer mask and it actually will give us extra parts on the side. Generative fill will help us there. Um, but if we wanted to, we could brush this in just a little bit and you'll see that we're kind of just changing the opacity here. But when I turn on the other layers, it just blends into the layer. So generative fill is generating pixels on top of everything. And so we could, in theory, uh, brush this out so that it becomes maybe a little bit less on the front. So you can see we're getting a little more, right? Maybe we want him to be a little more in the distance. All we need to do is brush in and out the generative fill. If you change the opacity, it's not going to be as good or it's not going to be as precise or look as realistic, but using a brush to brush in the, um, the mask right here uh, will be helpful to give us that kind of in and out look. Uh, something else that we could do is we could use the lasso tool um, and we could, let's go ahead and make a selection here. Actually, let's try to do, let's try to do just a ball. So I'm gonna do a, a selection with the circle right here. Let's try to do a ball and see if we can get like above ground and below, uh, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go to select and mask here. Uh, and we wanna take this down. So we're gonna take the opacity down just a little bit. And then we are going to feather it out a little bit as well. So you'll see we have a little bit of a uh, wider selection and using select and mask is going to give us just that more feathered selection. So from there, I am going to do generative fill and this one, we are going to do a, um, let's say uh, metallic ball uh, reflective. And let's see if it captures anything else in this scene. So 
in theory, let's see what happens. Uh, because we use that select and mash, change the opacity, change the feathering, it should give us a little bit of a different look with that reflective ball. There we go. It is capturing more of the water, which is great. Uh, and that is what I'm looking for. So you can see that it kind of caught the water a little bit better. Uh, and this one is sitting on top, not what we want, but using that selected mask will give us a little more of that interaction between the two pieces. And then again, I can come in to this mask right here um, in my layers panel. And on that mask, I can use the brush tool and then just brush in under here and you'll see that it's going to mesh with that water, right? So I wanna kind of just get those little edges to mesh through. And I there's a little bit here that's too much. I can change back to white and just brush that in. But you see that I can really achieve an effect of underwater, above water, really easily using the masks. And if we look right here, and it's kind of hard to see, um, let me see if I can, oh no, let me see if I can change the size of these for you real quick. Mm. Uh, but what you can see here is that this mask, actually, let's just quick mask. You can see it. There we go. You can see right there that the mask is actually painted out on the bottom here. And that's what's giving us that opacity of looking underwater, giving us that murkiness, giving us that really good mesh with the overall scene. Uh, it does change all of those pixels. And so as you start working with generative fill, don't just throw in full generative fill, like grab the thing and say, hey, generate this. Try to play around with meshing some of your selections and some of the masks that it's putting onto those selections because that will allow you to really blend your shapes together. This is great for water. This is great for sky. It's great for haze if you're trying to put something in the background in a distance. Uh, so play around with that, see what happens. Uh, and if you have questions, go ahead, of course, put them in chat. Uh, if you want to stick around for the rest of the day, we have more content coming to you from Adobe Live. Uh, if you want more content like this, what we just showed, uh, we do have pro tips pretty much every day helping you out to get the inside scoop on everything that you need to know. Um, I wanna see what you're creating. So if you create something and you use this technique to mesh things together using generative fill, tag Adobe Live on Instagram at Adobe Live, or you can tag me at hawk.co, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O over on Instagram, Behance, any of the social medias. So play around with generative fill and try to use a masking to mesh your pieces together. It's great for bringing sunlight in, for fog, all those effects. Try using some clipping masks. I know it's a little different workflow, but it works really well and it gives you some really cool results. So I'll see you another time for more Adobe Live. See you later, everybody.